So we're here today with um, another artist spotlight, and this time we're very happy to have Lucy Thomas. Hello, good Lucy. Morning. Good Hi, morning. you're right. You? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good. So, Lucy, do you want to tell us who you are and what do you do, and um, who do you drum for? I will do. Okay. Uh, so my name's Lucy. Um, I have been playing taiko for about 12 and a half years. Um, I'm based down in Exeter, um, down in Devon, uh, southwest of England. And I first started playing taiko because I was walking along the quayside in Exeter and I saw these group of people playing drums all together. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And it just so happened the friend that I was with um knew that it was the style was taiko drumming uh so i googled it found out that there was a company based in extra at the time which happened to be kagamusha taiko um and uh looked up their website and had a look at what courses and things were going on did some classes did some workshops and ended up joining uh one of the performing groups called tano taiko um and then it ended up being my job uh, which is a very brief history. Like I could probably spend a couple of hours just talking about how I got into Taiko, but basically I, I got the Taiko bug and not only just wanted to play, um, but wanted to make a living from it as well. So um, since 2013, um, I've been involved um, from an administrative point of view. Um, I helped put together um, the European Taiko conferences. There were four of those. Um, and also helped um, oversee uh, four UK Taiko festivals as well. Um, so, and now, uh, so Kagamisha Taiko is kind of rebranded into Taiko Southwest, uh, just so it's a bit clearer where we are. And we're very fortunate to have our own studio um, just outside of a town called Newton Abbott. It's about 30 minutes from Exeter. Um, so I oversee everything that happens there. We do lots of workshops and courses and regular classes. Um, it's also where Tano, uh, which is the main uh, performing group of Taiko Southwest, that's where they rehearse. Um, but we also go out quite a lot um, and go into schools and do a lot of um, Taiko workshops in schools. Basically, if someone wants a Taiko drumming workshop, I'll make it happen, whether we go to them or they come to us. Um, and then in more recent years, um, I've kind of um, begun to develop my own style and teaching style, but also begun to create my own pieces based on uh, personal experiences or life in general, um, which is where the Scottish Taiko Festival comes in, because I've been very kindly asked to come and lead a workshop. Um, yes. But I'm not sure it's a privilege you... to have you. It's a privilege to have you. You know, really oh, excited about thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't pay you out to say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and <clears throat> and I can talk about my workshop, I, but I don't know how long Joao wanted my previous answer to be because I could just talk and he could just mute himself and disappear <laughs> yeah. for half an hour. But <laughs> I could do that. That would make my life really easy. <laughs> But yeah. that's not what we want. We want to have a chat with you. No, yes. we want yeah, to talk, talk. No, no. I was, I was really interested about your, your experience organizing the, you know, the Taiko Festival and the European Taiko Conference. I remember years ago I came down to the Taiko Festival when Amano Jaco were playing, and yes, oh my God, what a bonkers experience! You know, it was so cool. It was, uh, yeah. That was, um, that was one of the most crazy fest. Well, that was the second festival that I was kind of heavily involved with, and it was mm -hmm. crazy. Um, and Amana Jaku were just mind blowing. They were so cool to watch. Um, and um, obviously, we were talking about before we started recording this how putting an event together is a huge amount of work, but that you do get quite a lot of reward from it. Um, yeah, and yeah, hopefully. just sitting and watching that kind of performance is the reward for all the work for putting stuff together. So I'm sure there'll be moments throughout the the Scottish festival in a couple of weeks where you'll just be stood there going, oh, okay, you know, it was all worth it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there will be. And, and you know, I, 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 I couldn't do much that year that I came down because I just had a surgery done. Um, and, and, but I, I still remember vividly the concert and you know afterwards you know after the second concert everybody went to to a restaurant and jonathan was kind enough to invite me to come as well and i still remember that vividly and and you know what an what an just what an amazing experience just being there you know and unfortunately i couldn't even take part in any workshops because of my surgery but yeah, um, yeah. but I, but just just being there and watching 
uh, I remember in the afternoon there was some some groups performing on the street. You know that that was you know amazing. And then going into the theater and just watching a group like Amano Jack was just something surreal. Yeah. It was surreal. I remember that year, it was a heat wave that year and it was very, very hot. I remember that much, um, which obviously just added to the like fun of moving drums around and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the great thing about any kind of taiko event, and I say this all the time, is that you can go and you don't have to explain to anyone what taiko is. They're already there because they really love it. And that just, and that's so good. Cause like, you know, sometimes in social situations where you meet other people and they're like, oh, what do you do in your spare time? blah 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 and you're trying to explain to them what taiko is and they just have this blank look um so it's so good to get like these kind of events happening because you can you can um you meet other people who love something as much as you do which is great yeah, yeah for sure yeah i quite often get the you know that that blank look and try to explain a little bit further and people say oh you know just like drum circle no no nothing like a drum circle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people can't visualize it yeah you're right people can't visualize it and and um and how how much of that do you do you encounter when you're going to you know to to schools and community groups and so on when you're trying to explain to them look this is what taiko is and this is how how beneficial it is for the kids and you know to do this group activity where you use your whole body it, there's lots of energy yeah. i mean how 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 do you get that do you use videos or no we um generally when we're in you turn school, up with a drum and start drumming this is what taiko is, <laughs> is what it is normally um we only get the kids normally because we have to work within the school day so if we have if, I, if i'm in a school for a day if we have the kids for about an hour um you kind of want them to experiencing experience the drumming as much as possible but i'll always give a brief overview of what taiko drumming is and where it comes from so they get a, an understanding of the history in the background but i generally say to them taiko is great because you get to hit things and you get to shout um, and so I always say to them, how many times in a day at school are you told to be quiet? And they're like, all the time. And so I'm like, well, I'm giving you permission to be loud in school. And they're like, yeah. Um, I need to remember and, that one. That's a good yeah. one. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But I also remind them that it's about being loud all together and it's a group activity and it's not about doing what you want when you want. Um, and generally the kids pick up on, up on that quite quickly. And they're also very good at kind of self um what's the word regulating each other so when another kid might be perhaps not listening or ruining it for everyone else they're normally the first one to tell them stop you're not you're not doing the right thing and then I don't have to and it depends you'll always get some kids that are just a bit bonkers um and the older they get there'll be a brief between like um sort of ages 12 to 15 it will be that they're too cool for school and they don't want to do anything and they hate you and they hate their life. And I'm just always relieved to make it through like in one piece. Um, and then they come back again. Like if you get the older kids, especially if they've chosen like drama or music as a GCSE or like for an exam option, then um, they love it. There's like just this brief window where, you know, they hate everyone. And I'm like, well, at least they don't just hate me. They hate all other humans um so but generally uh the kids seem to love it and it's different um and it doesn't involve reading or writing and they don't have to sit down and they don't have to sit still um and so it just goes against everything that they're used to in school so um mm -hmm. yeah it's it takes a lot of energy to teach kids like normally by the end yeah. of the day i just want to lie down in a dark room yeah. um That's my experience but as well <laughs> you do but you do that you can see that they get a lot from it and yeah. um, what we're discovering at the minute is how much kids have been affected by the um, pandemic everyone's been affected by the pandemic but children in particular who had sort of two years taken from them in that they couldn't go out with their friends they couldn't socialize they had to spend so much time at home so much time on devices um, and some children have lost that for, that really important formulative part of their development. And so the schools that we've been going into, um, I was in one a couple of weeks ago, they're doing a lot of work in trying to just help children um, and sort of as they're growing into teenagers, just to be human again, like remembering how to have actual conversations, how to make eye contact, how to like be in a group setting. And it's all that stuff that um, we generally take for granted, but they've been impacted so much. So going in and doing stuff like Tyco, which is a group activity and gets them working together. Um, it kind of ticks all the boxes on that front. Yeah. Do you know, I, 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 when I was a touring player, I, I never really, I never really had much interest in teaching kids. 
So, you know, I'd quite happy teach adults, but kids is like, well, someone else can do that. I'm not really yeah. that fast, you know. Um, and then since I became a dad, you know, I started teaching kids and I've re I really, you know, I've started really enjoying it. So much so that when we organized the festival, I said, I'll do the kids workshops. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you. Someone else can do the adults, you know, I'll do the kids, you know, it's fine. You know, so it's just so much fun when you get you know, like you said, the right age group and and just their sheer enjoyment and the energy they put into it is, is bonkers, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, it, you know, yeah, it's just, I just find it really gratifying, maybe because I'm a dad as well and I've got three small kids, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. But but you 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 also teach um, kids with special education needs. In, in Well, in, in Scotland, we call it additional support needs. In England, you call it special education needs. But anyway, people know what we're yeah, talking about. They're, but, they're, but yeah, mm -hmm. there's so, various terminology and it, and it, it kind of evolves. Um, sometimes we refer to it as um, SEND provision. Uh -huh. um, but generally, um, yeah, we have uh local organizations that will bring um their users to the studio um and it and it could be so there's an organization that we work with and they normally bring a group of children out during the school holidays for like a one-off session um so they'll be out next week because it's the easter break um and um but we also do stuff with adults with special needs as well um generally um, I'm trying to think of the, what the words I was going to say. That's helpful, isn't it? But yes, the, the short answer is yes, we do do a lot of sessions uh, for people with special needs. Um, and we have done, last year we did a festival. Um, it was a weekend long festival that was for oh, wow. people with special needs. So we were there for a day cool. leading workshops. Um, so that was fun. Um, and, um, and we have gone into... Um, schools as well that have that is that are special needs schools and we'll spend the day there doing workshops uh -huh, uh -huh. um ultimately it's not it's not hugely different in that our main aim is always to introduce taiko to other people and show how fun it is um normally the the main things that have to be a little bit different um is mainly just being aware of different behaviors um and generally knowing that a person in the room they might respond a particular way and what we do our ethos is we just keep going because normally people uh if we are in a special needs school if we've had um an organization come to us they'll have support workers with them and carers um and they know the the participants really well so they'll know if how they're responding is kind of a typical response or not typical um so generally if someone's We'll have, uh, pa like, for example, I've done sessions before. I've had two people in the room who were nonverbal. One of them was screaming because they were loving it. The other person was screaming because they were hating it. So their, their oh support goodness, workers yeah. knew exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just carried on teaching over the screaming because I was like, well, that's not my thing to deal with. Um, and also know that um, for some people, and this doesn't necessarily just refer to people with special needs, in any situation, um, especially if we're working with children, um, for some of them, it's just enough to be in the room not necessarily playing yeah. the drums yeah, yeah. but being experiencing it from a different way just by sitting in the room and listening and watching that that can be as much of a sort of an objective for that individual as actually playing on the drums themselves yeah um, and that's i suppose because uh, you know additional support needs is such it's such a mixed bag as well isn't it you get the kids with such a, such a wide range of abilities like you're saying and 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 even just the way they respond to things, you know, you really, you know, unless you're the carer, then you wouldn't really necessarily understand what that reaction meant. You know, no. I, I suppose the experience really counts a lot for, you know, being able to, to lead a successful workshop and making sure that they, they enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And also, and this, I think this goes with teaching anyone really, what works yeah. one time might not work the next time. Yeah. So you've just, you've got to think on your feet quite a lot because our plan stuff and I'll be like, this is this is <laughs> the window. At all. Um, I'm trying to push water uphill. Okay, let's do something completely different. Um, yeah. And I think that is a, a lot of teachers know to do that. Um, they know that you can't just stick to a plan because you're going to drive yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you're going to be doing some uh, some workshops for kids with additional support needs at the festival. Yes. As well, and really, really looking forward to that. And we've got, you know, a few sign ups for that as well already. And yeah, uh, but we still have good. some spaces. So people, if you want to sign up, you know, uh, feel free to. 
And I'm particularly interested in, in uh, being at those workshops, if you don't mind, and watching you and learning yeah, from you. <laughs> you know? just, yeah. Because that, that's, something I, I, that's something I, I, I really enjoy and I've done a little bit of it, but not that much. So, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, it's, it would be really great to kind of, you know, talk about it, but also, you know, w watch what you do and how you yeah. respond to situations and stuff and, and try and get you know, some learning from you so you can continue the mission up here in Scotland. Well, that's because <laughs> um, obviously when we were speaking about what workshops we might be able to offer, I was mm. like, well, if I kind of create a, uh, I don't know, a foundation, like, I, like you might not want me to say this because obviously I'm here to promote the festival, but I wouldn't ever call myself an expert at anything, really. I don't think anyone can call themselves an expert yeah, at well, anything. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I have various experience. So I was like happy to come up and share it. And then if that creates um links for you to then carry on work um or meet up with other organizations up there that perhaps mm -hmm. um would be interesting in interested in having workshops then um i feel that like that was something good for me to offer to help uh yeah, make those connections for you yeah we really appreciate that and you know who knows what will come out of the festival but what we do know is that something positive will so <laughs> whether it's that connections or something else you know we'll just have to i suppose play it by ear yeah. um uh, you know so we, we're, we're talking a lot about kids you know and, and that's i suppose that's that's a big maybe a why well, sounds to me like that's a big part of what what you do um but you also teach adults yes yeah, yeah. There'll be people I, watching this laughing because I, I'll normally I like I don't have a lot of patience. Which people that know <laughs> which people that know me well um, will know. Um, but and so obviously you need a lot of patience to teach kids. Yeah. Um, so I um, yeah I do prefer teaching adults most of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we have various classes that happen at the studio um and then um as in weekly classes and then i'll normally run one-off workshops as well um so for example next week i'm doing a multiple drum workshop which is basically a two-hour oh. session on playing more than one drum at once and kind of just being a bit rock and roll <laughs> i like that i like the yeah. sound of that can i sign up <laughs> a yeah. bit far but you know i was um... gonna say yeah i was gonna say given your experience and your sort of level of playing you probably you would probably be better off needing the workshop no, i just like the fact that it sounds rock and roll you know that's enough for me <laughs> yeah yeah um, no look and and you um so what's your performing group is it tano taiko yeah probably... so the yeah. main yeah main group um of taiko southwest is um Tano Taiko and uh, yeah we go out and about to local gigs and um, normally it's kind of like summer fairs or um, for example a couple of a few weeks ago we were at there's we have like a endurance run here um, that's 22 miles along the southwest coast path it's called the Grizzly um, so we always um, get a load of drums to the beach and we'll play for a few hours for all the runners um so that's on the local beach uh next week we're drumming at a um it's like a rotary event they're doing a fire walk a charity fire so people walking on fire so we'll be drumming at that so yeah we we do a lot of local gigs um that are kind of um we're normally like the um on a schedule of like loads of other things happening as well yeah so it's, it's really cool. It takes us to some very interesting places and we get to see some quite interesting things. Yeah, cool. Sure. Um, and I, I heard some things about you, um, including uh, the fact that you have been to Kodo Village. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me about that? Because I'm really interested about that. Um, so back in 2018, um i was really fortunate alongside um a few other people um who you you know most of them you know yeah. or two of them you definitely know uh martin and shona from sitchigumo daiko so yeah 2018 um eri uchida who uh was is was a performing member of kodo um she's left and is now um a freelance taiko artist um she put together this pilot program called roots of kodo or rock um that she she pioneered because she wanted there to be another level of experience for people that were not part of Kodo but for them to to experience really what it was like to be a Kodo apprentice member um because there's Casa Mix um which is a trip to Sado and you stay at the apprentice cent at center and you do activities alongside the apprentices um so this was tagged on to the end so I did Casa Mix and then Rock 
uh, roots of Kodo in the end. So that was uh, Martin and Shona from Sichigumo Daiko, um, Chiara from Italy, who plays Taiko Leko, um, and then Ilka from Taiko, who runs um, Taiko Heidelberg, and then Diana, Diana Wu from San Diego, um, who runs narrow and taiko you'll note that i did not say chiara or ilka's second name because i'm english which means i'm terrible at other languages <laughs> and i know that if i try and pronounce their name I'll I'm sure they'll say forgive it you. <laughs> um so yeah so sorry chiara and ilka um but yeah it was um it was a really intense program we had to do we had to cook everything from scratch ourselves we had to get up at half past five in the morning cook our own breakfast do warm-ups do cleaning go for a god-awful run uh i hate running um and there's quite a few photos <laughs> what's that sorry i thought you'd love it no. running alongside the beach and next no time. i don't care where it is i don't <laughs> want to run anywhere um and there's quite a lot of photographic evidence of me clearly hating running <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some and you want to think like because um martin is obviously um he's into all his fitness and stuff and ilka's a really good runner and also diana um and this is no offense to shona and kiara but basically every morning we'd start this run and like diana martin and ilka would just sprint off into the distance <laughs> and me and right. kiara and shona would just be like oh well <laughs> we'll see them in a minute um and then Eri would come, but on her bike. So she'd just be cycling alongside us going, go on, you can do it. And I'm like, well, you're on a bike. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So, yeah, we did running, we did cooking. Uh, we did um, a lot of um, traditional Japanese arts that Kodo used to help kind of, they they fuse it into their taiko playing. So there was, uh, we did onikenbai, which is... Um, the traditional kind of it's a dance and you're wearing a mask and you're holding a samurai sword and a fan and it's a really good workout for the thighs um so obviously kodo if you're doing sort of a lot of miyake and stuff like that it kind of is good work oh, that way, so that's yeah. interesting yeah yeah and and how much sleep did you get while you were there quite a lot actually because really? we oh, okay. yeah we had to be in bed by a certain time we had a schedule every day uh -huh, uh -huh. and we had to be in bed by a certain time um but it was quite because it was communal living so obviously it was mm. five five girls and martin so martin mm. had to be in a room on his own and he always said that the worst part was that after lights out you could just hear us all laughing oh, down the shame. corridor <laughs> he shame. had no one to laugh with oh no and yeah. i mean so so you did a lot of these um you know communal living stuff and and uh running around <laughs> um but there was also drumming i i suppose i imagine yeah we did we did do some taiko um what kind of stuff did you do did you learn like basic styles or did you learn pieces or what kind of stuff we um it it's something that they encourage the apprentice uh, apprentices to do that if they have a block of time that is for taiko playing that the the apprentices have to decide what that time is going to be spent on um and we'd done, um, I can't remember what it was. We'd done stuff on the Kedos. Um, and so I know that we were, we spent some time going over that. And we also, um, Yoshikazu Fujimoto, and again, apologies, I may not have said that completely correctly. Um, I did try. Um, he, during Casamix, we did no Daiko workshop with him. And he has a piece that he gave us. So um, it was all written out um and so we revisited that as well because martin and shona didn't do casamix they just came out mm -hmm. for the the roots kodo part so there was some stuff that we'd done on casamix that because me Ilka, kiara and diana had done casamix so there was some taiko stuff that we did there um that we then talked to martin and shona and we did do an afternoon session with um aichi saito it was his afternoon uh -huh. to teach the apprentices so we went over to the apprentice center and joined in um and it's quite interesting because aichi is brilliant he's a brilliant teacher yeah, and he's he a lovely guy but yeah. how he is when he's teaching a public workshop as to how he is when he's teaching the apprentices is a lot more strict and it's a yeah. lot more okay you got that wrong do it again and you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> but not in like a negative way he's obviously helping um helping them grow but it's it was like that difference because i'd done public workshops with him before. yeah so the difference in um, when he's with the apprentices, it's a lot more, okay, tough love. Because um, if you're going to make it through to the next bit, you need to be kind of like aware of all Yeah, of course. Things. Of course, yeah. yeah. That's that's interesting because when he does public workshops, it, 
they're a lot of fun and it's a bit like this crazed maniac running the workshop yeah you know? oh yeah and the and the afternoon with him at the apprentice center was fun as well it was just like uh -huh. next level intensity yeah um, like the yeah. warm-up the stretches and stuff those took half an hour um uh -huh. and it was all kind of like planking and stuff like that and um oh. proper fitness <laughs> stuff <laughs> i'm sure you love that nah. so, and you were also did you were also at the taiko expo last year yes with, with yeah that? and um you were doing your lunacy workshop then i did yeah, yeah. i um yeah hats off to the ete team because they had to navigate running an event during covid and trying to figure uh -huh. out what to do because obviously right. everything was supposed to happen in 2021 what a crazy task um, to set yourself <laughs> i know it was um because obviously in 2019 sorry slight tangent we did a euro european taiko conference in the uh -huh. february uh -huh. and then we did a uk taiko festival in july and that it nearly killed me doing two events in one year and then we knew that we weren't going to do anything in 2020 anyway because we decided to take a break but then obviously nothing could happen and i just remember thinking thank god we weren't like halfway through <laughs> trying to put an event together but then also really feeling for people that were yeah, in the midst yeah. of putting events together uh, but anyway yeah ete in hamburg last year was great um it were yeah euro taiko expo um and there were people there from all over europe and there was it was it was really cool actually because half the people mm -hmm. there i'd already met and it was really good to see them again because it was the first time we'd seen each other properly since before covid yeah. and then there was a whole like a load of other taiko players that i'd never met before um that were there so that was cool and yeah we so the way ete worked is that people could uh submit an app uh, a proposal for a workshop yeah um and fortunately um mel and jonas and the rest of the team they all they all uh put their confidence in me and um yeah so i led my elements of lunacy workshop yeah that's cool and and um yeah, I, like, once again, it, you know, I, I wasn't there for, you know, professional reasons, but um, I heard from a lot of people that was a really, a really fun event. Uh, and, you know, and I was I was talking to Martin, you, you know, for running this this first festival. We've, we've, we've been working at it for quite a long time and, and we kind of, you know, we sat down and we had a really short lead time to organize it just because of the way it worked out with our funding body. We, we weren't actually planning to, to, to organize it that soon. And then it just happened that, okay, it has to happen, you know, by these dates. And we're like, oh my God, how yeah. are we going to make it work? And, and you know, who are you going to invite to to do workshops and so on? And, and one of the first people that Martin said was, oh yeah, you know, Lucy did this amazing thing at ETE, this amazing workshop. Why don't you invite her to do that again? I'm like, oh, okay, let's do that, you know, and lo and behold, Lucy said, yeah, great. So can you tell us a little bit about the elements of Lunacy workshop that you're going to be uh, running at the, the Scottish Taiko Festival? Because it's sure. the same workshop, in essence, that you run at the ETE. Yeah, um, I'll have a little bit more time in Scotland. Um, ETE, uh, the workshop sessions are a little bit shorter. But yeah, so background, um, I wrote Lunacy during the first UK lockdown because um, I live on my own. And just because of how the rules played out, I had no, I had, there was no reason for me to see anyone. I wasn't allowed to. So I think it was about two months, like eight weeks before I actually had a conversation with someone that I knew face to face that wasn't on Zoom. Um, and so that that kind of like isolation will drive you a little bit crazy. Um, so I started to put lunacy together then. So it's kind of an indication of the times and where we're at. Um, and so there are four main elements to lunacy really that the piece revolve around um, A, B, C and D for like want of calling it anything more complicated than that. Um, and so it's those elements, A, B, C and D, um, that we that I teach in the workshop because they all sit together. Um, and so A, A and B are pretty straightforward. You're playing the same thing each time. It's just you might be changing the hand so that the first time round you're pointing one way and then the second time round you're pointing the other. So that's straightforward. Um, C and D is slightly more technical. However, I do have different versions. So uh, when I'm teaching it, I kind of go, well, this is the fundamental version. And I think in my description, 
I mentioned just being able to count to five. So one and two and three and four and five. So if you know that you can do that, you'll be fine. Um, and then D kind of sits over a similar pattern. And again, there is different levels to it. Um, and then the, the aim by the end of the workshop is that everyone can play A, B, C and D um, and can play it together. Um, but there are, but then I have um, a video that I've put together that I can then send to people afterwards. So if they're keen to do more of it or want that refresh, um then um so yeah it's um it's a fun it's a, i well i would say that because it's my workshop it's fun um and it's good brain gym that's a phrase i use a lot because it makes you think a little bit um but there will be different levels available so those that are newer to taiko or maybe a bit um overwhelmed by what it might entail you'll be fine um so um so don't worry yeah and great. even if you're not does it matter? No, you can leave the workshop and be like, oh, well, I tried. I did it with my best shot. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm going to go and have a beer. <laughs> so You could do, but maybe you want to leave the beer until the evening when you have the keli. Have you been to Scottish keli before? No, I know. Oh, I'm looking God. forward to that. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. I think there's a lot of people coming that have never been to keli before. So I, I don't think they quite realise what it entails. <laughs> yeah, it's I've a, done, yeah. It's a bit I've mad. Done. It's a bit mad. I know. I uh, I'm really yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. It should be amazing. Um. So yeah. No. It, yeah. And I just love hanging out with other Taiko players. Yeah. Um. Because it's such. It's still even though it's obviously growing as a performing art and mm -hmm. appearing in places all over the world, it yeah. is still quite niche. And there's also like it's one of those things to be around people that just get how much hustling you have to do to run a taiko group or organization like oh, yeah. so much work has to go yeah. in to managing everything you really and know it, that because it, obviously of you yeah. know, what you do yeah so getting to hang around other people because I it's I like everyone that plays with us regularly they're brilliant it's lovely um, and I, I obviously enjoy hanging around with them but the majority of what has to happen kind of there's a few of us and it falls on our shoulders um, to make sure everything that needs to happen happen yeah. happens so being around other people that also have like that it's that real um, juxtaposition is of that you're doing something that you absolutely love and brings you so much um joy but it can also bring a huge amount of stress and i kind of feel like especially having survived a pandemic and now we're in a cost of living crisis there's a huge amount of stress and so just to be around other people that get that um from a taiko point of view i know everyone can kind of get stress but you know what i mean like yeah. it's just nice hanging around with other people that kind of get where you're coming from yeah it's there's there's, there's definitely there's definitely a a healing quality to do a group activity where you connect you know with people that have got similar interests and i think hmm. yeah yeah I, I, you know it, it'll yeah it'll just be nice and i and it creates that it creates a special energy doesn't it you know yeah where yeah, even when you're not drumming, even when you're just talking about drumming <laughs> exactly you can have like these really intense conversations that you don't generally have with other people yeah um, and, it, and it's just it's really liberating yeah it is indeed okay so um yeah we're looking really looking forward to 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 having you at the festival and um yeah thank you for your time to to have a a, a chat with us that's all right and um people if you haven't signed up for lucy's workshop go and sign up please now. do you'll have yeah. a lovely time i promise <laughs> yeah she'll look after you you'll be well look after and you've, you'll have something something to work on and practice as well you know after the after the festival because you you, you can provide additional materials is that right for the yeah so workshop? if anyone yeah. if yeah if anyone <laughs> does the session and they because it's 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 kind of a whatever i teach in that workshop if you then want to take away back to your own group and use it that's fine as long as you kind of recognize that it's me that taught it to you i'm happy for you to use those elements and i can provide some other stuff afterwards that's not a problem yeah brilliant that's really nice of you that's great so yeah thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you at the festival All right few weeks yay, yay. bye